Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, we'll be doing some quick check practice problems to make sure you understand the material that we just talked about in terms of the, uh, the allowance method and then how to estimate bad debt expense. Okay, so we are on page 192 of your course pack. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the lecture video and do number 82 on page 192 and do number 88 here on page 192 and then restart it and check your work. Okay, thanks. All right, let's take a look at number 82. So if the credit balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts exceeds the amount of bad debt being written off, the entry to record the write-off against the allowance for doubtful accounts results in, and this question is kind of confusing, honestly. Basically, there's the right answer is D, because remember what we're writing off, we're writing it off. So remember the journal entry is debit the allowance for doubtful accounts and then credit the accounts receivable. There's no effect on expenses. When did you debit bad debts expense? At the end of the prior accounting period when you debited bad debts expense and then you credited the allowance. So think when you're answering this question, it's basically saying what's the journal entry when you write off a re receivable using the allowance method. It's debit the allowance, credit the receivable. There's no change, uh, there's no effect on expenses. There's no reduction in equity, there's no reduction in current assets, because remember you, you are reducing the allowance and you're also reducing the receivable. So the estimated realizable va value of accounts receivable is unchanged, right? Um, so there's no increase in expenses. It has nothing to do with current liabilities. All right, let's take a look at number 88. December 31st of the current year, a company's unadjusted trial balance included the following accounts receivable debit balance of 97,250, allowance for doubtful accounts, credit 951. What amount should be debited to bad debts expense, assuming 6% of the outstanding receivables will be uncollected? So I take 6% of my outstanding receivables. So 0.06 times 97,250 gives me 5,835, which you can see is one of the answers, but it's not the right answer. Because this already has a credit balance of 951, I have to subtract that to get my 4884C is the right answer. So you have to subtract out that existing balance in the allowance when you are doing your percent of receivables method for estimating bad debts expense, all right? So let's go ahead and look at number 91. And let me just kind of go over 91 with you really quickly, get you on the right track. So it says a company uses the percent of sales method to, to determine bad debts expense. At the end of the current year, the company's unadjusted trial balance reported the following selected accounts. You have accounts receivable of $355,000, allowance for uncollectible accounts, 500, and then net sales, $800,000 credit. Okay. Now we use percent of sales. That's what we're doing. All sales are made on credit. So all these sales are on credit. Based upon past experience, the company estimates that 0.6% of credit sales are uncollectible. What should be the journal entry? So I'll let you do that one. And then I also want you to do numbers 92 and 106 on page 194. Pause the lecture video, do those three, and then restart it, and then let's check your work, okay? Thanks. Okay, so let's see how you did. Number 91 here on page 193. The right answer is D as in David. This allowance for doubtful accounts at $500 debit and then the receivables, those two are not relevant for the percent of sales method. All we have to do with the percent of sales method is multiply the credit sales times the percentage uncollectible. So this is in there. Again, as I've said, you told you in prior lecture videos, I can be evil. And this is just in there to see if you know what's relevant, what's not. It's a confuser. And if I, if I confuse you, then remember, this is percent of sales. That's what it says. So it's per sales, credit sales times the percent uncollectible. So times 0 0.006 gives me $4,800. The right answer is D, it's in David, okay? Let's look at number 92. So a company has $90,000 in outstanding accounts receivable. It uses the allowance method to account for uncollectible accounts. 
Experience suggests that 6% of outstanding receivables are uncollectible. The current debit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts is $800. What is the journal entry? So we take our 90,000 times our 0.06 gives us our 5,400. Now this is a debit balance. So that means, just as we were, I was explaining in the prior lecture video, you have to add that. Okay? You have to add that because what you have over here is you have your allowance for doubtful accounts and you've got this 800 right over there. Okay? And what you want it to be is you want it to be 5,400. Okay? So, in order to get this to be 5,400, and I want it to be, because it's 6%, I want the allowance to be 5,400, which is 6% of my outstanding receivable. So I've got this 800 debit balance here, so I have to add that. So because what I could, if I put 6,200 here, which is the 5,400 plus the 800, then I could say my 6,200 minus my 800, then equals my 5,400. So the right answer is C, okay? Let's look at number 106 right over here. We use the allowance method again, and it shows our accounts receivable, 104,500, allowance for doubtful accounts, credit, 665, sales of 925, but it says that you can see this is the percent of receivables because it's giving you the percent of receivables right there. So it's our 104,500, our receivables times 0.04, minus, because it's a credit, 3,515, so we would debit bad debts expense, credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for 3,515. That would be our journal entry, okay? Let's look at 113. So our company, right over here, 113, uses our percent of receivables method to determine bad debts. At the end of the current year, the company had the unadjusted trial balance right over here, 435, and then we have the uh, 1250 debit in our allowance for doubtful accounts, 2.1 million sales, net sales, and those are all made on credit. It says based on prior experience, and this is a typo, it should be 3% of receivables. Okay, so you can make that change right there, it's a typo should be 3% of receivables to be uncollectible. What adjusting journal entry should the company make at the end of the current year? All right. So again, accounts receivable 435,000, allowance for doubtful accounts 1,250, net sales 2.1 million. Pause the lecture video and do this problem and then check it. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's see how you did. C is the right answer. 16475 so you debit bad debts expense for 16475 and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for 16475 How do we get that? We take our accounts receivable, 435000 times 0 0.035, which is our percent of receivables that we think will be uncollectible. That gives us our 15225 but then we have this 1250 debit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. Remember, we have to add that. 16,475 is our journal entry. Debit bad debts expense, 16,475. Credit the allowance for 16,475. C is the right answer. Okay. All right. I'm in this lecture video now. In the next lecture video, we will talk about notes receivable. Thanks so much.